Who were the ancient pharaohs of Egypt? We have postulated on many occasions that the evidence to suggest the Great Pyramids are far older than currently attested, and as such, far outdate those who academia currently claim as the builders, is not only overwhelming but mounting by the day. The question as to who their constructors were remains elusive. Another enigmatic mystery still to be answered, if one goes by this premise, is who were the mysterious figures who have been found dotting the Valley of the Kings? Were these jewel-adorned mummified individuals the actual original constructors of these awe-inspiring as yet unexplained ancient ruins? Not only is there strong evidence to suggest that the Great Pyramids themselves were built with an enormous exoskeleton of blocks stretching far into the thousands of tons, but that casing stones which now encase these original blocks are indicative of no less than two later stages of building, which we believe were in an attempt to conserve that which still remains at the site. It is undoubtable that whoever accomplished the original building of the miraculous structures, for an as yet unexplained reason, had a tremendous intellect, far eclipsing that of modern man. It is interesting then to note that many of these ancient pharaohs, although rarely shared by academia, seemingly possess craniums far larger than that of our own human skulls. This extra size could be an indicator of a far greater brain mass than that of us, and thus a far greater intellect. Possibly making this mysterious group of leaders, each possessing an elongated skull, likely candidates for being able to have accomplished that which we now look upon as seemingly impossible achievements of ancient architecture. Often concealed by their headdresses, depicted on the many surviving statues of these individuals, which has allowed academia, and indeed the many museums who display such ancient art, to conveniently overlook that which lies beneath. Elongated skulls have been found all over the planet. Interestingly, or rather compellingly, found within close proximity to the many now unexplained ancient ruins found all over Earth. Were we visited by these beings? subsequently, due to their enormous intellects, becoming our leaders? And due to their astonishing capabilities, once perceived by ancient man as gods? Additionally, many ancient, still surviving tribes still practice a form of head binding. The question is, where did these techniques originate from? Who inspired such practices? And were they in an attempt to replicate the appearance of the gods? Elongated skulls, clearly as a result of these practices, are also found at sites around the world. Yet these skulls are easily identified as that of humans. This due to the recognizable cranial napping or stitching of the skull, present upon all humans as a growth pattern. However, those of the Egyptian pharaohs, Peruvian elongated skulls, and a number of child sacrifices found high among the mountains of the Andes do not share these same easily identifiable, deliberate deformations. In other words, these pharaohs and other elongated skulls, concluded after in-depth analysis of their compositions, seem to have actually been their natural shape, allowing for a brain mass far insuperior to that of the human skull. Are these elongated skulls undoubtedly consisting of a far greater size brain space found among ancient ruins we cannot replicate, merely a convenient coincidence? Or were they indeed an ancient race of beings we are yet to be made aware of by an academia clearly attempting to conceal vast portions of ancient history? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. This ancient cemetery within present-day Hungary has perplexed anthropologists for the past few decades. Amongst the remains of some 51 individuals was the discovery of many apparently human yet elongated skulls. Although many elongated skulls unearthed around the world are mysteriously absent human skull napping, indicative of skull binding, an ancient practice once initiated at a young age, 
These skulls, however, do appear to have these natural human napping patterns. Yet the mystery of their origins, even after DNA sequencing, has merely deepened. Individuals including adult males, females, and children had, quote, artificially deformed skulls with depressions shaped by bandage wrappings, end quote, making this place one of the largest concentrations of this cultural phenomenon ever found in Europe. Curiously, the strontium isotope ratios here are significantly more variable than those of other remains, including animal and prehistoric burials, which have since been uncovered in the same geographic region. This indicating that these mysterious people lived elsewhere during their childhood, yet where they originally came from remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, carbon and nitrogen isotope data attest to remarkable contributions of millet in their diet, although all the remains have now been dismissed as human. Intriguingly, some photographic studies of certain remains of particular interest are yet to be publicly disclosed. If human origins indeed be the case, it still does not answer the question as to where this ritual originated from, or why it seemingly permeated many of the world's countries, such as Germany, Malta, Russia, Hungary, along with many others. Were these ancient people trying to emulate a now lost civilization? Possibly unknown ancient beings, they and many others throughout antiquity, not only perceived as, but depicted as gods? Additionally, why are there so many mysteries surrounding this practice? Why is there such mystery surrounding the crystal skulls? And why are so many skulls we have personally examined seemingly absent normal human growth patterns? Were ancient aliens possibly found amongst these individuals within Hungary? We find the ongoing discovery highly compelling. Elongated skulls have been unearthed in many places on Earth, linked to ancient cultures globally. To this day, artificial practices of accomplishing this striking deformation can be witnessed among remote tribes in certain parts of the world. Thanks to this, and indeed the remains that have been found and studied previously, we not only now understand how this elongation is artificially accomplished, but also anomalies found on some specific and rather special specimens. For example, if one exhumes the remains of the ancient civilization of the Han culture, one is able to establish many things regarding the past technique. The individual skull which endured said practice this can often be done by tracking the cranial napping found upon all human skulls. However, what makes others so intriguing, for example the Paracas skulls or the lost believed stolen skulls of Malta, this napping that one would expect to see is either absent or, if present, not of a deformed nature, suggesting that the previous owners of these craniums had this naturally from birth leading to many hypothesizing that they were either a now lost subspecies or possibly an ancient alien visitor. If we track the provenance of these beings, one can also argue this increased cranial mass as a possible contributing factor in increased intelligence. Many of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt exhibit this, and indeed the skulls found at the ruins in Malta with its astonishing acoustic properties. Their burials evidence of them once being valued members of these societies, but also the possible contributors to the advancements in technology and architecture found at these sites. The most unusual, however, those with no evidence of binding, have been found at many prehistoric sites, such as the so-called alien mines along the banks of Lake Superior. Lloyd Pye has also made a lucrative business promoting the discovery of a curious humanoid skull he found a few years ago. Although not dismissed as a deformity, many still strongly believe it to be that of a human-alien hybrid. Regardless of the artificial binding which still occurs, questions remain. Why do some of these skulls appear to have been natural? Why is the ancient practice undertaken? Who inspired it? 
Why were the exquisite skulls of Malta stolen? Are we really looking at the remains of ancient alien visitors? It is an area of historical research, which we find very intriguing.